Hey everybody, welcome back to the MedBros channel. And I know I sound a little bit different right now. So I've been really ill for the past maybe three, four days. Um, and the people I caught it from, I mean, they were ill for like two, three weeks. It was a really, really bad bug or flu or whatever it was. But I got over it for the most part in a few days, but uh, this is the only thing that's left is my throat that's bothering me. So hopefully that clears up in the next couple days. But yeah, I didn't want to miss out on making a video for you guys this week. So we're going to try to get through this the best I can. Hopefully I don't sound too horrible and you guys can understand what I'm saying. So I'm out here using Benit setup today. Uh, that's why I have our nice little silver makeup table here we're going to be using. And I just want to go through how I memorize everything for medical school. So this is not just for medical students. I'm 100% confident that whatever field you're in, whatever level of study you're at, you can definitely benefit from doing these techniques. As a lot of you guys know, medical school is mostly memorization. And everyone has their own way to go about memorizing the giant amount of information that you need. So one of the primary uh, mechanisms of memorization that a lot of people like to use is using a mnemonic. So mnemonics are cool, um, but a lot of people do a couple things wrong with mnemonics. Number one, they make mnemonics when you do not need a mnemonic. I've seen people that get to a concept and immediately start thinking about a mnemonic. It, you have to put an effort into making a conceptual understanding of something first. Number two problem with mnemonics is it's hard for mnemonics um, to stick if they don't make sense. Now sometimes they're like super vulgar or something super crazy or wacky or they're really, really funny words and rarely, rarely do they stick. Um, one that comes to mind is meatloaf. That one has always stuck for me. Those are the, your, <laughs> oh man. Those are the muscles of the thumb that are um, integrated by median nerve, so meat, median um, nerve, and then loaf is the lumbar holes, opponents, abductor, flexor, like that's stuck in my head. It's very rare for a mnemonic that's just totally random, like meatloaf. Again, I also will preface these are things that work for me. Who knows, random mnemonics might be your thing if you just want to do completely random off the wall stuff and it works for you, that's great. I just find if it has a story, if it has um, something to go off of, like that will stick longer. So basically my main tip with mnemonics is take, take your studying as far as you can go conceptually with understanding when you're at the last resort pull out the mnemonics and there as well, try to make it conceptually make sense, try to tell a story about it. And worst comes to worst, comes the absolutely balls off the walls mnemonic. And also the step before you make a mnemonic, um, there are certain things that you're gonna see so many times, especially in medicine, that you don't need a mnemonic, you don't need anything like the Philadelphia chromosome, translocation 922. That's such a random set of numbers. At first thought, you might think you need to make a mnemonic for it. how am I gonna remember, you know, translocation 922, all these random numbers. You're gonna find that stuff that comes over and over and over again, and it's really important. You don't need to make any kind of memorization technique or anything like that. It will eventually start sticking if it's super, super important. So there's something that I used to do even before I found Sketchy that was my go-to technique. And if I incorporated a concept with this technique, it was so powerful and to this day, I still don't forget pretty much almost, I think anything for medical school that I use this technique on. Um, so let's go into that and I'll show you guys exactly what I mean. So basically this technique that I'm gonna show you guys is I would make a drawing and then kind of incorporate the mnemonic with the drawing and the drawing would have a story, the drawing would have a cool character, the drawing would have something related to the disease and I would just have to recall the drawing. Very similar to the concept Sketchy does. I haven't opened this since I ended step one. You guys can see like I literally decimated this book with so many notes. So this is basically how I memorize all the diseases and all the associated facts. Um, and by the end of this, hopefully you guys will never forget even if you're not doing medicine, hopefully you guys will never forget what Mankey's disease is and you guys will um, be able, even by the end of this video, I guarantee you, you guys will be able to tell me at least three things about Mankey's disease. Especially if you're a Pokemon fan because you know exactly where I'm going with this. So Mankey's disease is basically a disease where your copper cannot be absorbed and transported into your body uh, because you make a defective Mankey's protein. Uh, specifically, the messed up part um, is located on gene ATP7A. When this messes up is you get decreased activity of an enzyme called lysyl oxidase because some enzymes need uh, certain cofactors like copper to work. So in this disease, you can't absorb your copper, your lysyl oxidase messed up, your lysyl oxidase is responsible for uh, making up collagen, and we all know collagen can, you know, contribute to skin and hair. So people in Mankey's disease, as you can guess, could ha have kind of brittle, kinky hair. 
Um, and then without copper, you also have a bunch of other problems like growth retardation and you know weakness in your muscles and we call it hypotonia. So how do we find a way to effectively memorize all the stuff that I just said and be able to recall it on an exam uh, really quickly and not run through giant mnemonics and this and that and I will say the only downside of this technique is you have to come up with something that's catchy that might take time you might have to make a drawing that might take time um, but the investment for me honestly guys has been totally worth it and it doesn't take that long to put things together but number one I would only do this for things that something glaringly sticks out at you as being a good mnemonic like a manky disease like come on guys if you guys know what the Pokemon manky is you, you know you got a mnemonic mnemonicize this <laughs> so as you guys can see I created this kind of story with this manky kind of got that brittle hair going on I accidentally drew with him with his arms up earlier and I had to erase that put his arms down kind of show him hypotonic kind of weak uh, I kind of make these constant symbols that represent the same thing in all my pictures. So for me, neurodegeneration, I just started making this kind of like star thing on his head that you guys can see there. So right next to him, you guys can see here that I put this kind of like measuring stick thing it's supposed to be, and I guess I marked him lower. That just told me that, oh, he's got some growth retardation. He's like lower on the height level. X and crucessive usually affects boys, so I made it a boy manky. So you guys can <laughs> see if you can figure out how I did that. If you don't like my immature way of doing it, then you guys can uh, figure out your own way. For the recessive part, just remember he's a manky. He's not evolved, he's still he's still recessive. So it's specifically the mutated ATP7A. So when you get to start, when you start seeing all these weird stuff start happening, you gotta be able, you gotta start thinking out of the box, you gotta start being creative, you gotta start making a story around your character to memorize all these little side facts. So the manky looks kinda weak, he's out of it. So I apologize if a lot of you guys watching are not familiar with Pokemon. You guys know mankeys are like little fighting Pokemon, they like fight so you need a lot of energy for that you need a lot of ATP but this manky looks like he doesn't have enough ATPs why does this manky have brittle hair now that you memorize it if you know it's a copper problem if you know it's an ATP 7a problem at that point you should be able to make the connection of what enzyme uses copper lysyl oxidase if that's not working then you're going to have messed up collagen you're gonna have that brittle hair so everything starts making sense you can add as much as you want to it you can make the story whatever you want um, I just find this technique is so powerful. So if you're sitting there on a multiple choice exam and a child is described as having brittle hair and he's weak and he's a boy and the question asks you what gene is messed up and there's a bunch of choices then what should instantly blast in your head is a weak little manky and what was he missing? You lack an ATP, so look for your anti-choice that says ATP 7A and you got it. That's how I pretty much did um, majority i would say a good majority of how i memorized everything for this exam and it works so effectively i was getting through questions with i sometimes i would get um in my practice rounds i didn't take as i took it a little slower on my actual thing but on my practice rounds i would have like 20 minutes left sometimes so i hope that makes sense and let me know if it works for you and also post your cool pictures somewhere i don't know tag me on instagram or something uh if you guys come up with some cool stuff i'd love to see it um even if you're not in medicine even better if you're not in medicine. If you guys can somehow incorporate it into what you're doing, I'd love to see that because that would be amazing. And those of you that haven't given it a try because it takes a lot of time, give it a try for the things you really want to memorize. You know, again, it does take a lot of time if you put it for everything, but how about try it just for that thing or a couple things that you need to memorize for the test and you'll see the power of it. So right now it's been a couple minutes and how many, let's see how many things we can remember about Manky. Right now I'm picturing this Manky that's got this brittle hair, uh, he's kind of slouching, he's weak, he's got his little copper belt, he's weak because he doesn't have ATP, like all these facts are just spewing into my head because I see that image of that manky just standing there. And then from there I can tell you everything about disease. ATP7 is a gene that's messed up and that messes up the enzyme lysoloxase because there's no copper being absorbed, which gives you that brittle skin, uh, which makes you weak, which gives you neurodegeneration um, and growth retardation because he was short next to that stick so all that stuff if you guys can memorize that and you guys can recall it right now that's all medicine is and you just have to do that picture by picture by picture by picture and there's some things like i said in the beginning of the video you can use mnemonics you can raw memorize and most importantly try to conceptualize everything before you go to these techniques um and even within these techniques you can conceptualize like i said why does he have brittle hair it's because you don't have collagen being made because co copper is needed for the enzymes to make collagen so like, you have to conceptualize everything don't just throw it all under a mnemonic test this technique out a week from now come back to this video and post what you can remember just go straight to the comments and post what you can remember about manky's disease and if you guys remember like three or four things 
that would be really impressive. If you guys can just explain why, what the disease is about and what it looks like, that would be very impressive and that would validate, I think, this technique that um, has helped me score what I scored on the USMLE. Um, this was probably the single most powerful thing that got me my score and my voice is absolutely going out, guys. So, <clears throat> thank you for tuning in and hopefully this helped and like, share, subscribe, check me out on Instagram and stay tuned for more videos from me and check out my sister Bobidi's channel and thank you for watching and we'll see you guys in the next one.